Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening uh, to the attendees. Uh, I noticed that we have people from around the globe uh, joining us today. Um, you are really welcome to this uh, Committee of Expertise uh, from UNICOM. Uh, as you can read, it is noted September, October. It happens we are the 1st of October, but uh, that is actually the September uh, Community of Expertise. We will have another one this month, but uh, towards the end of the month. Um, my name is Christian Hay, and I'm uh, very happy to moderate this session together with Robert Stegway, um, who is the, the lead of Work Package 1 at Unicom. Um, this session is uh, dedicated to the role of those forms in the generation of a global, global pharmaceutical product identifier. For that, we have invited um, a couple of uh, colleagues and experts uh, to share um, their view and their stage of information. Uh, we have first uh, Malin Fladbad, TG Chen, they will be together then Joseph Roumier, then Christopher Jarvis. But I will let you know more about who will be uh, on the stage. First, I want to remind you some rules for the virtual meetings. I do that at all the meetings, but I think it is a good practice uh, to remind the audience about that. Um, the attendees are on mute. Uh, please uh, use the Q&A facility um, to ask your questions. You will see a response. You may see a comment to the response, etc. I will show you that also in a separate slide. If uh, uh, you are speaking, that happens sometimes, so we give you the microphone. Uh, we ask you to be concise. Um, and uh, in all the processes also with the Q&A, you may show uh, that you approve something. And I will show you exactly how that works. Uh, you can, after uh, the presentation, but also during the presentation, ask questions or make comments uh, related to what has been said uh, with the Q&A. Sometimes you will be answered directly, but uh, mostly uh, the, the intention is that we respond to these uh, comments and questions um, during the, um, you know, the interactive part of the webinar. To access the Q&A facility, uh, it is um, useful that you move your mouse on the screen and then you see a, a function bar here. It is on the bottom of my screen. Sometimes it is on the top of the screen. Uh, and here you find uh, the Q&R. And um, when you click on this Q&R, you will see something like this uh, window uh, where um, for the purpose of the example, my colleague uh, Robert um, was asking me a question and I uh, expressed myself and you see you can also respond. So uh, this is the way to exchange with the, uh, uh, the presenter and the panelist. And uh, as I said also before, you can move your uh, mouse and show thumb up uh, to um, increase the ranking of a question to bring that question up on the pile of the all questions, so that uh, we will consider that uh, maybe in priority. The security of this uh, webinar is a priority, of course. Uh, the webinar is password protected. Uh, I hope everybody has understood that uh, your password is a personal and your access is personal. Um, this uh, session is uh, recorded and it is also broadcasted on the YouTube uh, channel. Um, you will have um, at the end of the virtual session uh, a questionnaire. So at the end of today, you will have a, a questionnaire uh, which will be sent to you. Uh, and we are asking you to respond to this uh, questionnaire. It is important for us to uh, evaluate uh, your reactions and your opinions about what has been said today. Today, we have uh, four speakers. As I mentioned before, we have uh, Malin Fladvad, uh, who works at the um, WHO UMC. Um, so uh, she's uh, responsible uh, for uh, the, um, the medicinal product dictionary at uh, 
um, uh, UMC, among else, and she's very actively participating to uh, Unicom Work Package One. We have with her uh, T.G. Chen, uh, who works at the US FDA. Uh, T.G. is uh, very deeply engaged in uh, IDMP implementation, also uh, internationally with ICH. And uh, I think uh, he's one of the experts in this um, space. After the two uh, speakers together, uh, we have presented their views. Uh, Joseph Roumier um, will um, talk to us uh, uh, about uh, his findings. He made a, a very important investigation. Um, uh, Joseph Roumier is a linguistic resource and semantic web researcher. And he works uh, together and for a couple of years uh, in this space, uh, but he works together with uh, IHG, IHD, sorry, uh, and uh, Robert van der Stichelde for the purpose of this uh, um, presentation here. He will tell you a bit more about himself as uh, necessary. Um, the last speaker will be uh, Chris uh, Jarvis. Chris uh, is uh, working at EDQM. Uh, so at the Council of Europe, and he is uh, um, our voice uh, with the uh, uh, standard terms maintained by EDQM, uh, which includes uh, those forms. Uh, he will cl close uh, the series of presentations. Uh, Chris is also responsible and lead for the revision of the ISO standards uh, regarding this uh, domain. We have two panelists. Uh, Ron Fitzmartin is uh, also working at the US FDA. Ron uh, is an active participant in the ISO um, uh, working group um, and has uh, promoted, I would say, his experience already there. Um, and certainly he will complete um, the, the talks uh, we will have before. And Robert van der Last but not least, um, he is uh, representing also IHD, and uh, he um, is actively participating in the Unicom project uh, as an expert in the field of semantics and clinical uh, aspect of uh, IGMT. This said, uh, I want to insist once again on the fact that uh, please use the Q&A facility um, along the, um, this webinar. Um, and um, also, um, you will see in the chat box in a while, uh, the hyperlink for the feedback, which I mentioned before. Uh, this is uh, this hyperlink here, and uh, you will be sent this again. Uh, afterwards, we need really your feedback uh, to improve uh, and maintain the quality also of our presentations and uh, uh, information sharing. This said, I want now to give the floor to uh, Malin Flava, uh, and she will uh, report back from this uh, UMC pilot with the US FDA. Malin, the floor is yours. Thank you, Christian, and uh, good morning and uh, good afternoon. So, um, in this first part of this uh, webinar, I will talk a bit, little bit about the FDA UNC pilot that was done during the spring in order to evaluate the use of pharmaceutical dose form characteristics for the generation of pharmaceutical product identification. And involved in this work was Ron Fitzmartin and THN from US FDA. We also had great, great help from Terry Quinn from NDI, EVS. Uh, we had Julia Newman supporting from UMC, and of course, a lot of other people as well. But this was the core team. So next, please, Christian. You should have the new slide here. Oh, I can't see it. Okay. Ah, there it is. Maybe I turn off my video. So just to make sure. So to start off, what is the pharmaceutical dose form? Well, the pharmaceutical dose form is built 
from a set of basic dough forms, which are in turn grouped according to the state of matter, for example, gas or liquid. And each pharmaceutical dose form is associated with attributes that describe the release characteristics, transformation that is required to be carried out before administration, the intended site of administration, and the intended method of administration. So next, please. So from the Unicom gap analysis, a number of gaps were identified in relation to those forms. And it was highlighted that the adoption of those forms according to IDMP standard had been difficult. So next, please. So the NCAs are in the process of implementing the standard in their own processes and are facing backward compatibility issues because of the granularity of the terminologies that varies frequently within EDQM. Also, US FDA has shared uh, difficulties in implementation, which are similar to the ones found in Unicom. So next, please. So if we look into uh, the US FDA difficulties that was seen. Um, it was recognized that when implementing a central dose form terminology uh, and looking at various regions that have their own set of terminologies, they show that the different level of granularities resulted in that the one-to-one -one mapping between the regional terminology and the centrally controlled vocabulary was of low quality and with a low amount of one-to-one -one mappings. You can see in this picture that with mappings that was tried out during 2018, that's from several dose form terminologies, we can only identify like around 20% of one-to-one -one matches between the FDA, the Health Canada, uh, SNOMED, CDISC, and also ephemera mapping. So next, please. So to solve the issues with mapping between different dose form terminologies, a proposal was made at the ISO TC215 workgroup 6 to use a centrally maintained set of dose form characteristics to describe a dose form term and code and to use that in the generation of PHP ID. And to evaluate this new concept, USFDA and UMC agreed to perform a pilot study during spring of 2021. So next, please. So this dose form characteristics pilots would work by assigning the shoes, the shoes and EDQM dose form characteristics for US marketed medicinal products corresponding to a set of selected substances that was identified in the Unicom pilot product list. And it was in total 37 substances. So the evaluation that was performed on the dose form characteristics was based on that we used the administrable dose form. So if we go next, please. So here you can see that the manufactured dose forms are transformed into administrable dose forms. And if we go next, the resulting dose form or the pharmaceutical dose form for the PDF is solution for injection. And then if we look at the characteristics that we chose for this study, we choose the release characteristics, the intended site and administration method, and together with the basic dose form that form the set of input data to PHP generation. You can see here that we didn't use the transformation and that is of course because we are talking about administrable dose form and then there is no transformation, it's already done. So next, please.
So on this slide, you can more clearly see the characteristics that we used. So you can see that if you look into the full set of data from EDQM, you have the pharmaceutical dose form, you have the state of matter, the basic dose form, the transformation, and then to the far right, you can see the, what we choose for this study. So the, the release characteristics, the intended site, the administration method, and the basic dose forms that are actually related to administration method. So next, please. So the scope for this pilot regarding PHP ID was to a bit simplified. So what we focused on was to generate uh, the PHP ID level four. So the most uh, complex level representing both the substance, the dose form and the strength. So if we go to the next slide, we will look a little bit into how did we actually process the data uh, to generate the PHP ID. So what we did was that we started off looking at the trade name, the market authorization holder, and the dose form information for each medicinal product that we had chosen for this pilot. And the substance information was then verified and the relevant salt and esters of the substance was defined. And then an appropriate pattern was selected according to the dose form to express the strength. And we will come back to that a little bit later. Uh, when we had then defined all the data, including the strength, that was worked out as an input for the ND5 digestin to actually form uh, the PHP ID. So next, please. So here in the process, you can see that we had a specific part that's called the pattern. So how did we work with this? Well, if we go to the next slide. We will see that for uh, strength, well, according to the standard ISO 11616, the strength used for PHP ID is primarily the presentation strength. But for liquid preparations, the standard suggests that both the presentation strength and the concentration strength should be taken into account. So this pilot evaluated the above concepts for strength and in generation of PHP ID. And in order to find a consistent way to express the strength for different product types, a framework or pattern was developed that was actually based on the EU implementation guide for IDMP. And these patterns were applied to express the strength for different products. And here you can see a schematic of the patterns that we use uh, the st presentation strength and the concentration strength a little bit differently. So for a simple tablet, for example, we would express the strength as strength by presentation, while for other ones, like for vials and liquids, we would use the strength by concentration. So when we had then decided on the pattern, we were ready. We went in, into the PHP generation. So if we go to the next slide, you can see a schematic of uh, what we did here. And here I have simplified it in an Excel. So we have the input data straighted out here uh, for the ingredient, the strength. You have the, the substance and the reference substance, depending on what substance you have. And there to the far right, you have uh, the dose form expressed according to the basic dose form and the characteristics that we chose. So all of this was fed into the algorithm and there were, of course, some assumptions made, like, for example, for the strength, we decided to use two value digits uh, right now. And then we have the resulting PHP IDs. So if we then look at the result, what challenges did we find? So if we go to the next slide, we will some, see some challenges that we found regarding the basic dose form. So here is an example of uh, 
the dose forms and the information regarding the COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer, so community. So you can see here that both EMA, FDA and UK actually expressed uh, it a bit differently. So for EMA, they expressed it as dispersion for injection, FDA as suspension for injection, and the UK expressed it as solution for injection. And the result you can see here below, what, what would that make for the PHP ID generation? Well, that would actually generate different PHP ID because yet you see that the basic dose form all are different according to dispersion, suspension, and solution. So here you can really see the need, I think, for a global PHP ID that they need to be a way to, to harmonize this information if different uh, regions express uh, their dose forms in different ways. So then if we go to the next slide, we can see another challenge. And that was actually regarding uh, multiple values in the dose form characteristics. So for certain pharmaceutical dose forms, there are multiple values. So here you can see an example for a chewable tablet or a chewable dispersable tablet that the administration method is dual. So you have both chewing and swallowing uh, for both of them. So these kind of makes the expression and simplification of the numbering of the dose form a little bit complex. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, we can also see uh, some challenges that we had regarding using uh, the dose form characteristics to generate uh, PHP IDs. Uh, so here you can see uh, some tablets and some capsules. And you can see, for example, for tablet, that if you have a sublingual tablet or a buccal tablet, that that would result in the same PHP ID if you use the dose form characteristics to express them. And similar is for tablet, coated tablet, film coated tablet, and also tablet with sensor that all of these would have the same uh, dose form expression. We also can see this for capsules, for example, for capsule hard and soft. Uh, we looked at a little bit of limited set in this pilot, and we could also see a bit of a similar problem with ointments. But otherwise, uh, it was actually fine. We didn't get this like same PHP ID, neither for infusions, oral solutions, creams, or ocular formulations. So then if we go to the next slide, uh, I think we can summarize this pilot that using the dose form characteristics for PHP generation is really working well, uh, although there were some issues identified. So there were certain dose form characteristics with multiple values. We also saw that using dose form characteristics will in some cases result in aggregation of the PHP IDs. And we also noted some challenges with strength and substance that we haven't really, we don't really have time to go into them today. So then if we go to the next slide, So from this outcome of the pilot, we have now suggested some su revisions of the ISO standard 11239. Uh, and some of the revisions are, you can see here, so some are that the framework for using dose form characteristics uh, for expression of dose form and dose form course, that that should be clarified. Uh, we need a framework for to address label variations in those forms and also mapping those forms between region needs to be stated uh, or guided uh, in the standard. So then if we summarize from a more global perspective in the next slide, we can see that the regional terminologies can be maintained if we use the central dose form characteristics for global PHP IDs. 
And this approach can be used prospectively and retrospectively to assign the characteristics to new or currently market medicinal products. We have a recommend that a single global maintenance organization assign the dose from characteristics to read the terminologies. And what we need moving forward is that best practices of using a central dose from characteristics and other potential characteristics needs to be developed. So this was in principle everything from me. I don't know, TJ, if you want to comment on anything in the presentation. No, in fact, thank you very much. You make my job so easy. Uh, there's nothing else I'm, I would add to your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, TJ, and over to you, Christian. Thank you, Marin. Uh, thank you for this uh, interesting presentation, which gives us, you know, the, the result uh, of this very important uh, pilot. Um, I think uh, Unicom is uh, the unique opportunity to uh, test the really uh, implementation challenges in the larger scale. And um, this is a, a great opportunity also not to limit ourselves to Europe, but also to expand uh, outside of this uh, continent and hopefully we will also have chances to expand in other regions uh, at some point of time. Now the next speaker is uh, Joseph Rumier, um, who uh, prepared this presentation to uh, inform us about the outcome of his uh, uh, investigations together with Robert van der Stiefel. Uh, Joseph, the floor is yours. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Melin. So I, I wanted to specify that um, this work has also been supported by Stand ICT uh, EU, which has the purpose of supporting European experts present in international standardization uh, activities in ICT. So I'm going now to talk about this analysis of ATQM dose forms for the production of the pharmaceutical product identifier, PHPID. Next slide, please. So the IDMP standard indicates that the administrable dose form together with substance and strength must be used to generate the PHP IDs level three and four. The standard also refers to a global reference terminology for pharmaceutical dose forms, EDQM. But currently we observe a diversity of dose form terminologies instead with different levels of granularity, making it difficult to align them with EDQM. Next slide. But this situation is about to improve with the current revision of the IDMP standards. And we analyzed the ETQM dose form terminology in order to support that and in the identify several potential improvements, none of which uh, require extensive modifications of the ETQM. And also to further support this uh, analysis, we made a preliminary, preliminary implementation. Next slide. So the objective of this analysis so is to identify the changes in EDQM and for the ISO CN revision, identify so small modification to improve the characteristics, the attributes of EDQM dose forms, and also explore different combinations of characteristics of dose forms to test whether such combinations are definitional and hence useful for the global generation of PHPID to explore the creation of a simple ontology of dose form to be used in the linkage of PHP IDs to international classification and to be used in the alignment to other dose form terminologies such as NOMAD CT, RX norm, CDISC, and WHO drug. Next slide. So, this identified point of possible improvement in EDQM starts with, with working on the relationships between PDF and administrable dose form and not um, uh, the manufactured dose form. Those are different. different. Um, in ETKM, currently the administrable dose forms, ADF, are currently um, indicated when a PDF has a tag ADMDF, administrable dose form. And um, it, it's also indicated for PDF that they can be transformed and that they are not administrable as such. The result of a transformation that occurs on the PDF is not always obvious. The question is which administrable dose form do we obtain after 
the transformation. An additional point that we identified is that definiti definitions sometimes contain more information than contained in the four main char characteristics of the PDF, and that these definitions and this additional information should be formalized for it to be more tractable in, uh, and, and shared. For some PDFs also, there are characteristics that are, have multiple values in the value set, and they are currently handled in different columns and not as combined values. So this is something which makes it a little more difficult to, to work with, but we, I will present a solution that we worked on. And finally, two missed opportunities in our views. Uh, the first is to split between cutaneous transdermal, because sometimes, uh, often, um, the PDF is, is valid for cutaneous or transdermal, and sometimes they are, um, um, they are good for uh, both cutaneous and transdermal. The second missed opportunity is to identify by those form whether the medication is intended for systematic, systemic use or not. For example, again, this uh, split between cutaneous that will be more local and transdermal, which will be uh, systemic, or sublingual forms that would be systemic, and some nasal and rectal forms for which sometimes the, the effect is systemic or local. Next slide. Finally, to sum it up also, the proposed improvement to DQM. So first, the link between PDF to be transformed and the resulting ADF should be made explicit. The values of characteristics where multiplicity occurs in administration method, transformation, and intended site, the, these three characteristics of PDF, should be concatenated with a new code value for the combination, because currently there are codes for each of the values, but not for the, the combination of them. The intended site value, IZ, for cutaneous transdermal should be split when possible, and the distinction between local and systemic could be made whenever possib possible, which is most of the time. Next slide, please. So in order to work on this, we, try we started with creation of basic file, a spreadsheet for the analysis. We obtained the freely available data from the standard uh, sorry, EDQM standard terms database through their API, API that works very well. Thank you very much. And we focused on the ones we were interested for this study. First, uh, the ones that are human and veter veterinary, but human that are not veterinary only. Also, the ones that are not currently in the status of rejected or deprecated or Pending. So from the 563 PDF that we obtained from ADQM standard terms uh, when we downloaded, uh, we went down to 428 PDFs, which are the ones we worked on for the uh, later. Next slide, please. The first um, topic was to um, make explicit the link between PDF and ADF. So first thing to do was to identify with this ADF, the administrable dose form from the pharmaceutical dose form. So very simply, we, we differentiated between the ones with no transformation in which the PDF and the ADF are the same thing and the ones with one or more transformation, which um, represents 143 PDF. First case is when there is one transformation 121 cases of PDF. And for them, we were able to find 114 ADFs and seven for which we did not find the corresponding uh, unreasonable dose form. The other case is when there are more transformation, up to four, and it corresponds to 22 PDFs, 12 with a combination with no transformation. And in this case, we arrived to seven clear ADFs and 15 ambiguous ambiguous, meaning here that there can be several uh, administrable dose forms with after transformation of the PDF. Next slide, please. In order to carry out this, uh, this work, we first started uh, ourselves and then had the discussion uh, with uh, Christopher Javis for, from uh, EDQM that we'll speak later and the cases in which it was more difficult and we find sometimes diverging uh, ADF were, were the case of soluble 
tablets, dispersible tablets, other tablets, uh, herbal tea, and, uh, and, and yeah, and other cases. So, next slide, please. After having identified uh, the ADF in order to work on the combination of characteristics, we further developed our spreadsheet by adding to it the basic dose form of the PDF, the state of matter of the DF, a, uh, PDF, and also the ADF that we found together with the basic dose form and the and, and state of matter of this ADF that sometimes are different from the ones, of course, of the basic uh, of the of the pharmaceutical dose form. You also see on the right hand side on the on the on the of the, the schema with the lighter blue all the items that we uh, modified or add. So we had these cases where we have multiple values for the characteristics and the equal, we call it the combined terms. And the only item that we characteristic that we um, actually created in addition to the existing one is the case of the systemic uh, characteristic. Next slide, please. So going a bit uh, deeper into, into this, um, what is the, the, the case? But Malin already explained that very well, but the, from the PDF to the ADF with transformation, so you start on top of the column with the PDF term, concentrate for oral suspension, and then you have the transformation into the administrable dose form, the oral suspension. It's important also to show that the BDF for the, the basic dose form, so the PDF and, and for the administrable do, dose form can sometimes be different. Here for the PDF, it's a concentrate, and for the administrable dose form, it's a suspension. In both cases here, the state of matter is liquid, but in other cases, it's, it's different as well. Next slide, please. So I said that we worked also on combined characteristic values. And here for the FSPSN tablet, for example, it can have either dispersion or dissolution. And uh, in order to work in our spreadsheet, we created this new value of the value set of transformation, which is the combination of dispersion and dissolution. We, we all, of course, this combination doesn't have a code within the EDQM uh, standard term database, and I will talk about that later. Next slide. Also, going back to the intended site, some, I was talking about the case of cutaneous transdermal. And in the case of transdermal patch, for example, the, the value of the intended site is transdermal, a cutaneous transdermal, which in fact is uh, here um, often or always a transdermal um, and have it with an effect which is uh, systemic. Next slide, please. Finally, I give here the example of, a, sorry, it's a it's a PDF term, which is a bath additive, and uh, for which there is a split between uh, from cutaneous transdermal to cutaneous. And for these values of uh, the uh, EDQM characteristics that do not do not have uh, an identifier for the purpose of our work, we created new identifiers, temporary new identifiers, which are easily uh, uh, different from uh, the others, starting with 999. Next slide, please. So this is the end of the preparation of the, of the, of the file with which, we, which we carried our uh, analysis. And then we worked on choosing the right combination of characteristics for the production of PHP IDs. We worked with these new value sets uh, created, and we tested several combinations of characteristics in order to, to see the impact on the uniqueness of the of the description of uh, the PDFs. Next slide. So this is the, the summary of uh, our uh, analysis of these all these characteristics. So on the top line, you see the titles of the column that uh, we are familiar with now, with uh, with the exclusion of the PDF and ADF. But we have all the characteristics. So basic dose form, state of matter. Um, the same for the administrable dose form, the transformation, the release characteristics, the uh, intended site, the 
administration method and the characteristic of being systematic or systemic, sorry, or local. The three um, uh, more important uh, columns here are the ones that show whether uh, this combination of characteristics lead to uh, the unique characterization of the PDFs, or if there are multiple uh, potential PDFs with the same uh, series of values of the characteristics of those forms. That's... And the first line, we have all the characteristics, so of the first, everything, and we arrive out of 428 different PDF to uh, a result of 420 um, unique combination of values of characteristics, which is uh, almost perfect, almost uh, definitional, if, 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 even if it's not the case. And the second line, which is uh, circled in red, shows when we don't keep uh, systemic um, uh, characteristic and we still arrive to a high level of granularity of these uh, uh, values with 402. Next slide, please. We also uh, kind of replicated the, the work uh, that has been done by UMC FDA uh, by selecting the characteristic administrable dose form, uh, uh, basic dose form, release characteristic, intended site, and administration method. And the result is 179 unique combination to describe this uh, 428 um, um, PDFs. It's a, it's a lot lower that, than what we, we managed to, to do. And um, it's also comparable with the number of dose forms that can be found in the Rx norm dose form uh, terminology. Next slide. We came to an intermediary conclusion, which is that characteristic combination should not aim at defining uh, PDF, but they, they should serve as grouping similar PDFs. And for what? To create a small ontology of PDFs to improve the alignment with other PDF terminologies. Next slide. Thank you. The, in order to, to create this uh, small ontology, we decided to focus on the line 12, which is circled in red, uh, with the characteristics, which has trans transformation, risk characteristics, internet site, and administration method, which lead to a good uh, number of unique um, combinations to describe the 428 EDQM um, dose forms. And it's also a good candidate for other uh, terminologies such as Rx norm with 149 um, uh, um, dose forms. Next slide, please. So let's talk about now a bit about the methodology to create this uh, dose form ontology. You see that there are three levels. And um, on the right side, you see a, a big picture of it. So, so the level one is uh, really uh, coming directly from uh, EDQM, uh, standard terms with the intended site and a number of items of uh, 25 values. The lower level, level three, is the set, set of PDF from EDQM with 428. And the intermediary le second level is in fact, the grouping of those forms according to four characteristics: the, the, the as I said, transformation, release characteristics, I have lost Joseph. I hope I'm not the only, I'm the only one. Administration method and intended cycle. So classify the groups alphabetically according with putting no transformation. This is manual cook example to split oral liquids in oral drops and oral liquids. And the end, the so next Jeff, subsequent Jeff, step missed, is naming the results. Five minutes groups. Jeff, we missed you for five minutes. I think you okay. should yeah. start Can again. You... Yeah, can you please repeat what you said about this uh, this slide? Um, we heard what you said on the right side, level one, the okay. level three, and the intermediate, uh, but it's better that you repeat that completely. Sorry. 
Okay, thank you, sorry. <laughs> I didn't realize, of course. Mm -hmm. So uh, the top level comes directly from the intended site um, of uh, the those forms of uh, ADQM with a number of 25 items. I will show some of them later. The lower level, level three, uh, contains, uh, again, strictly the PDF coming from EDQM with 428. And the uh, intermediate level uh, forms the, the those form groups. And I will, with a number of 50, um, 50 items. And I will just now describe how to create this intermediate second level. So group them according to the four characteristic, transformation, risk characteristics, administration method, and intended sites. Then mechanical steps of classifying the groups alphabetically by intended site. Then put PDF with uh, no transformation first in our um, spreadsheet. And the last step is the, the more subtle one with the manual concatenation and splitting of the groups based on two criteria. First, the clinical relevance, for example, putting all the oracle of those forms in one group. And second, the impact on strength presentation, sorry, for example, split oral liquids in oral drops and oral liquids. Afterwards, these uh, different groups were named in a consistent manner. Next slide, please. And this is all on the left hand side of the, of the slide. You see on the level one, as I said, the intended site coming from uh, from the vocabularies of uh, of, uh, of EDQM, and the level two, uh, are, you see the names um, and the uh, and the items go, that go under oracular. Next slide. Finally, all this work was put uh, together into a, a proper uh, ontology um, that was uh, then. Uh, worked on and commented uh, within this platform, which is called Web Protege, which is an editor and a place for uh, interactions around ontologies. And you see on the left hand side, um, highlighted in blue, the level two, which are the, the this new intermediary level that you created. And under, under this, the all the, the uh, EDQM standard terms uh, PDFs, level three. Next slide. Finally, in order to, to go a bit further, we worked also with Nathalie Karapetian from Harvard, Harvard, sorry, to uh, to to use this uh, uh, this intermediary level and to to show how um, the the those forms from um, uh, uh, RxNorm could be put in the uh, with the help uh, aligned with the help of the of the of this intermediary level. The numbers are uh, a granularity are really different with EDQM, which has 428 uh, dose form PDFs and RX norm with only 149. So, but you see that's the same structure at the higher level and uh, under Oracle local dose form, you've got um, like around 15 uh, PDFs for EDQM on the left and three on the, on the right hand side for RX norm. The next step is to work with uh, the SNOMED City uh, dose forms. And, uh, but we think that connecting uh, SNOMED City would, should be uh, uh, easy or easier um, because there are more similarities. Last slide, please. Conclusion. So this proposal for small modification of the EDQM standard terms can fulfill several goals. First, it provides a correct basis for the analysis of combinations of characteristics. Also, uh, we found out that combination of characteristics should not be used to define PDFs, but to group them. And this tool for linking PHP IDs to patient for higher aggregation of those forms in the context of INN prescribing and substitution. And also it may provide a basis for basis of for alignment of those forms between ADQM, RX norms, Command CT, CDISC, and Who Drug. Thank you very much. And um, I'm passing the mic to Christian. Thank you, Joseph. Uh, that was a, a rapid, uh, speedy journey 
in a complicated subject. Um, I would like to uh, invite uh, the participants to uh, make uh, the use of the Q&A facility because uh, uh, with such a, you know, a dense uh, message, uh, I, I cannot imagine you don't have questions. Uh, even if you ask to repeat something, it uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, it is important that the message passes through. Uh, thank you, Joseph, again. And uh, now the, the floor will go to uh, Chris Jarvis. Um, and I thank him uh, for his presentation. Thank you, Christian. And uh, thanks, uh, Joseph, Malin, and of course, all of your colleagues who've been involved in this. Um, so today, uh, I'll just be summarizing really um, a little bit of what has been the result of these, these projects that um, Malin and Joseph have, have both presented as part of, uh, part of Unicom, it, uh, part of the work that's been done largely um, through Unicom. Uh, if you go to the next um, slides, uh, yeah, one more through as well, please, Christian. Thank you. And really there are there are two things which which um, are being proposed from this this work the first is to uh, update the the standards um, 11239 and the implementation guide the technical specification 20440 related to these um, uh, to the pharmaceutical dose forms but also the other other controlled vocabularies and the other is then modifications to the the actual standard terms database itself um, of course, the, these are really proposals that I, I'll be, I'm going to be presenting to the Standard Terms Working Party, but um, I should say it does need to be considered um, by the Working Party. And then um, if there are any major changes to the, to the real process that we follow or to, to any of the particular rules, they would need to be adopted by the Pharmacopoeia Commission, European Pharmacopoeia Commission. Um, but from, as has been mentioned by Joseph towards the end of his presentation, I, I believe that a lot of them are really minor changes. It's not really impacting the um, the, the actual terms and the, the definitions themselves in standard terms. Uh, so next slide, please. So the first issue I was going to, uh, I'd, I'd like to talk about is the, the, the fact that the, the dose form attributes um, were written in the standard in such a way that they were not intended to be used directly themselves. They were really just meant for grouping and, and indexing the pharmaceutical dose forms. And as we've gone through implementation, it's become clear that it would be advantageous to, to actually promote the use of the attributes themselves directly. Uh, that'll mean that we're going to uh, uh, need to make some changes in the ISO documents, just mostly about around the wording on how they are, um, they're not just for um, indexing pharmaceutical dose forms, that there are certain use cases where they can be, um, it can be useful to use those directly, where a pharmaceutical dose form, an entire full pharmaceutical dose form might not be appropriate. So there's a section will be involved uh, that will be um, added in uh, around that subject. Uh, at the moment, there's uh, three use cases I've, uh, I've included in the standards, uh, just generally describing them. Um, grouping related pharmaceutical dose forms for prescribing purposes, uh, representing concepts from a different controlled vocabulary. So that's really covering what um, Malin and um, TJ and what the, the first presentation covered with the FDA um, the FDA work. Uh, a lot of that was was the driver behind the, the revision of these uh, dose forms, um, which which Ron has uh, uh, presented a couple of years ago. And the third one is uh, considering how to exploit adverse event reports that don't contain the full information, because often you're not going to you're not going to have somebody turning up with the medicinal product packet, and they might only have a limited amount of information, especially if it comes from a patient who's not necessarily uh, entirely um, up to date with the with the standards and the the, the terms that we use. Uh, next slide, please. So the first one of these points: uh, grouping related uh, pharmaceutical dose forms for prescribing purposes. Uh, just to give an example of the si a situation, you, you could imagine, uh, for example, that a, a prescriber might uh, might have a, a certain amount of information that that 
they, they want to, to put across. And they have certain requirements such as uh, they want to give a patient uh, amoxicillin 500 milligrams orally three times a day for seven days, but they don't really care what the specific pharmaceutical dose form is. Um, in which case they might not wish to select necessarily a, a pharmaceutical dose form, but they, they might just say, well, we, we need it to be an oral preparation, a conventional release one. And they, they might, a prescribing system might, might allow them to, to select some of these attributes. And then from there, they could either go and choose a specific product or a specific uh, pharmaceutical dose form, or you know, it might even be able to, to leave it up to the dispensing pharmacist. Uh, so in this case, for example, you might have a conventional release taken orally, and it could be a powder for oral suspension, it could be a tablet, it could be a hard capsule. Uh, the use of the, of the attributes in this way allows a little bit more flexibility for the, for the prescriber. Uh, next slide, please. So now the second one is uh, really referring to the work that uh, Malin, TJ, Ron, and, uh, and all of their colleagues have, have taken, uh, have been working on for the last, um, I, I guess it must be a year now, um, at UMC and FDA. Um, um, and this is where th the main issue of trying to harmonize and um, uh, find, a, find a common terminology, a standardized list of terms which cover products from all over the world, bearing in mind how different some of the granularities are between the, the dosage forms used in Europe, the dosage forms used in the US, used in Japan, everywhere like that. And uh, the solution that was being, that was proposed and that was tested in the, the pilot was, uh, instead of uh, having to select a specific dose form, to, to base it on this, the list of um, uh, attributes from, from the standardized terminology, from the EDQM terminology. Uh, one thing that's worth remembering is, of course, the PHPID describes the administrable pharmaceutical product. So it doesn't take account of whether the, the package product is a powder for solution or whether it's a solution as it is. It's just what's administered to the patient that's most important. And, and this is why um, you'll see a lot of the, the PHPID, the dose forms used for PHPID, the list is a lot more restrained compared to the full list of, uh, of dose forms <clears throat> that are available. Uh, so here, for example, you, you might have um, um, a, a term used in the US the, that would be converted into uh, these four attributes. The basic dose form would be a solution, release characteristics, conventional, intended site, parenteral, and administration method injection. Uh, if somebody from Europe, for example, chose to use the, uh, was using the, the standardized PDF, the, the, um, the standard term, that particular term carries those very same attributes. And what this means is that whether you come from the US side and you uh, fill in these attributes or, but, I say the US side because, of course, they were deeply involved in the in the pilot. So whether you come from a region that chooses to use the attributes, or whether you come from a region that chooses to use the the the, the standard term, the the pharmaceutical dose form, the result is that you would have these same attributes. And if everything else was equal, the substance, the strength, then the global PHPID would end up being the same. Uh, regardless of whether you use the dose form or whether you use the, the attributes. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> and yes, the third example was, um, as I said, if you, if you have a, an adverse event report and for example, perhaps the, uh, the person making the report is the patient or um, a carer for the patient, they don't have the medicinal pa package with them. Uh, the name, for example, they might not remember the trade name. They, they just know the, the substance name, the INN, for example. Um, the strength, maybe they can't remember that. Maybe they have an idea. And the pharmaceutical dose form, if, if they say, well, I know that there are a load of capsules and tablets. Um, it's a solid. It was taken orally. I don't know exactly which one it was. It's limited information, but 
um, using these PDF, the pharmaceutical dose form attributes, it can still provide useful information. And it's possible that with this combination, you might immediately be able to identify the medicinal product, or at least the, not necessarily the, the specific brand, but you could, you could identify the sort of product it is. Um, even if you can't do that, it could be useful for um, aggregating adverse event reports. So I think that there's a very big advantage for um, making these uh, attributes available for adverse event reporting in case um, you know, the, the, the pharmaceutical dose form cannot be definitely identified. Um, uh, next slide, please, Christian. Uh, one of the other questions that has been raised and was uh, addressed with uh, Christian Robert's work was the proposal that the pharmaceutical dose form attributes um, be, it be considered whether they should be definitional. Um, uh, ju just to clarify, this would mean that each dose form would have to have a unique set of attributes and no two dose forms could share the same set. Um, the problem is that this might prevent the, uh, for example, uh, EDQM working, uh, standard terms working party from including nuances that might be necessary to distinguish between terms and definitions uh, uh, for, for similar products, but ones that have perhaps um, differences that really need to be pointed out, or it's very helpful to have them pointed out. Uh, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, here I've got a, a sort of um, a mock-up, well, not a mock-up, but uh, parts of screenshots from the standard terms database where one of the search options is to search by the pharmaceutical dose forms by characteristics. And if you go into the, the, the search menu at the top, this is the, uh, I think it's the last option on there. And here you can put in all of these different characteristics. And there, for example, I've, I've chosen the um, uh, tablet, conventional, no transformation, um, oral site and intended administration method is swallowing. And the, here you might recognize these results from uh, Malin's presentation earlier. You can see that this, if you put in these, uh, these, these combinations, you get eight results. Um, two of them I've, I've grayed out because we can, you can ignore those if you like, because as has been mentioned, that uh, certain ones have um, multiple uh, entries for each of these, uh, for, for one or more of these attributes. So the chewable tablet also has uh, chewing for administration method, et cetera. So if we ignore those, you're still left with um, six terms, which have these exact same characteristics, no more, no fewer, no, less, no, uh, no more. Um, so we have the coated tablet, film coated tablet, tablet and tablet with sensor, which are the current terms. You might, you might consider that it's not that important to have differences, but these are different terms. They, they are used for marketed products. And in order to, to try to distinguish between them, you would need to have, well, you need to have more and more attributes. It's a bit difficult to, to define what exactly might be necessary in the future. Um, I, I've also included these two rejected terms just to, to point out that in standard terms database, we do occasionally include um, rejected terms where they are terms that maybe we've, we, we've seen have been requested or try to be used a few times and we want to explain why they're not appropriate. So caplet has been requested a few times and pill, these are sort of common terms or it's like terms which mean basically tablet, but we, we create those in the same way as a normal current pharmaceutical dose form. So they, they also carry these attributes. So it's also another reason why you might need to consider allowing uh, more than one dose form to have the same characteristics, even if it's just to say, well, this is a term that is used, but we then redirect you from caplet, for example, to, to tablet instead. Um, so the, the next, next slide, please, Christian. Um, so uh, we, I think the, we've come to a similar conclusion as, uh, as, um, as Joseph and Robert have, that we, we don't intend to make the attributes definitional. Uh, as has been mentioned, in the, in the standard, I think what we're going to, at least in the technical spec specification, we're going to suggest that um, it might be worth considering adding additional attributes, but not really specify which ones they are. Sterility and uh, local or systemic action are, are two ones that, that really um, were uh, 
<clears throat> came out from, from the work done by uh, Joseph and Robert. And these are ones which I think we're going to, uh, I, I'm going to have to discuss with the Standard Terms Working Party and see whether those can just be added on into the database. Um, but it's not the intention to make anything else mandatory. We're not going to add any more attributes to the to the standard as, as mandatory attributes. So we'll stick with the same, uh, the, the basic dose form and then the four attributes underneath. Uh, next slide, please. And then another question was the, uh, the administrable dose form. Um, as I said before, the PHPIDs describe the pharmaceutical product, and when we use that term, that means what's actually administered to the patient, not as not what's presented in the packet, in the medicinal packaging that you find in the, in the pharmacy. So, the PHPIDs only ever refer to the administrable dose form. Uh, they really ignore entirely the manufactured dose form. And here, I've just given an example of um, imagine you have the product powder for oral solution. Um, the manufactured dose form is powder for oral solution. The administrable dose form is oral solution. Uh, one point it's worth emphasizing here is that both of these terms are pharmaceutical dose forms. It's just that depending on uh, the, uh, the, sta the stage of the product, if you like, um, they can be used in different, different steps of the product, but they are both different types of pharmaceutical dose form because you can of course have an oral solution that is that's what you get in the packet so the manufactured dose form is oral solution as is the administrable dose form in that case uh, what we're proposing for the for the standard uh, 20440 the implementation guide is to recommend that a label be added to indicate which dose forms are administrable dose forms and indeed that's that's already the case in standard terms for for a few years now we've had this uh, labeling option so you can really just pick out the administrable dose forms uh, what we're also going to recommend is that links are provided as as it has were suggested also in the joseph and the uh, um, um, uh, study um, links providing uh, provided to, to indicate which is the relevant administrable dose form for each of the pharmaceutical dose forms, combined dose forms, whatever. Whatever you get in the pack, um, we're going to recommend that a link is made to the equivalent administrable dose form uh, for, that, for th that particular product. Uh, if you go on to the next slide, this is a, a screenshot from the standard terms database just to show uh, this is uh, some of the some of the the powder terms. You can see that there is a, a tag there saying um, four of those at the top there are administrable dose forms, and you can see that the ones where it's missing are things like powder for suspension. So that needs a transformation. You can't give the powder itself. Um, the effervescent powder that's intended to be mixed with water, so it's not directly taken by the patient. It has to be transformed as well. So it's all things like they have powder for solution, powder for suspension. Uh, so that sec that part is already covered in standard terms, but, but the the particular links uh, those aren't those haven't been implemented yet. Those haven't been created. If we go on to the next slide, there's um, I have a few examples of the sorts of links that I'm talking about. If we look on the left, uh, I've called these the medicinal product. As I said, if you have the the an oral solution, that's just what's in the packet. That's the pharmaceutical dose form. Um, what's administered is oral solution. So uh, it, there's no change you would have, uh, that term oral solution would have as its administrable dose form, oral solution, exactly the same term. Uh, under that, we have uh, powder for oral solution. So in the packet, you have the powder. We would link that to what's actually administered, the term to describe what's administered oral solution. Um, and that can also apply to the other terms, not just the pharmaceutical dose form. So CDF, that's the combined uh, pharmaceutical dose form. So you might have a product that has the powder and the solvent, but again, what's administered is oral solution. So that term, we could provide a link to that as well. Um, a combined term is just um, a term where the, the container is also included. It, this is more in Europe where um, this happens rather than in other regions. But again, if you have an oral solution in the sachet, again, what's administered is oral solution. So um, this is the term that would be used for creation of the PHPID. 
Um, the last example there is a slightly, it's a, a more recent development where we have the combination pack, uh, where we provided a single term to describe where you have two separate medicinal products that are packaged together. And in this case, you would have to, if, if we did include the um, uh, a link, it would have to go to more than one administrable dose form. But they're, they're fairly, that's a fairly uh, small use case. And I think it could still be useful. It, I don't think it would do any harm to provide that sort of um, that sort of link either. And as I said, it would generate, it would aid the generation of PHPIDs for medicinal products. Um, as Malin had uh, explained in her presentation, um, had the little box coming up saying the the, administ the basic administrable dose form. Uh, this would basically allow for that to be automated. If you started off with a powder for a solution for injection, that was the information you had for the, the dose form, you'd be able to immediately say, right, the administrable dose form for that is solution for injection. And the basic dose form for that is therefore solution. And it would be able to automate this to, to, to help generate the, the appropriate PHPID, which, as I said, refers to the administrable uh, dose form, regardless of what the actual manufactured item uh, was, whether it was a powder for solution for injection or a direct solution for injection. Uh, next slide. Okay, thank you. Uh, so this is just really summarizing um, a couple of things. I, I haven't gone into the details of everything there. Um, uh, for 11239 for the ISO documents, there'll need to be a certain update just to, uh, just to make sure that um, the wording is correct to allow the attributes to be used directly and to make sure that the, that the, the documents are harmonized. Um, as I said, uh, suggest that the, uh, the terms be linked to their administrable dose forms and say that other attributes may be added but that really depends on the user's needs. You can't really foresee and standardize every possible requirement that a user has. Um, and it might not be necessarily the maintenance organization, so standard terms that needs to uh, take account of all of these different needs. But it's something that's uh, going to be added to, to basically to introduce the subject and um, uh, encourage conversation to be, to be had around, around that. As far as the standard terms database itself is concerned, and I said this would need to go to the standard terms working party and to the uh, European Pharmacopeia Commission to, to really uh, to go through. But uh, what I think is um, would be useful is to, of course, promote the attributes to full terms. That would mean that they could be browsed and searched and translated, et cetera. The same as a, a full pharmaceutical dose form, route of administration, et cetera. Um, it seems very sensible to add links between all of these dose forms and the, the relevant administrable dose forms. Uh, there are some other details for, for combined, the combined pharmaceutical dose forms it would need to find a way to say, right, these are the manufactured dose forms that are related to this term. And this is the administrable dose form that's given to the patient. There'll need to be some um, work done in standard terms to just to label the, these elements appropriately. Um, and then there's the uh, consider. We'll have to look into the the results a bit more carefully with uh, from Robert and uh, Joseph and see um, uh, whether adding attributes such as sterility and whether it's local and systemic action um, is is considered appropriate as uh, as, uh, as additional attributes. Uh, on top of this, there there were other other suggestions such as uh, splitting up the cutaneous and transdermal use. And I think all of these are perfectly valid, um, valid requests. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the, the current state, the current standard terms database was really, it wasn't built with, um, with the, the needs that we're now coming across in mind, as in it wasn't built with uh, the intention of having the attributes to really point you towards um, uh, specific terms and really divide them up. It was more for the user interface where if you say, right, I'm looking for a term for something that I know is going to go onto the skin. Um, okay, it's cutaneous or transdermal, right, I'll have a look in there. But it doesn't mean that we can't, uh, with justification, um, assess that in the standard terms working party and say, well, maybe we can split this into two and look at some other things, you know, the oral mucosal um, examples that, that Malin came up with at the moment, buccal, sublingual, uh, 
those are all linked, those are all described as intended site or a mucosal. So I think it's worth us looking into whether that needs to be uh, maybe um, uh, split up a little bit more. As I said, this is all something which, uh, thanks to the work that um, our colleagues have done who've already presented, it's uh, come up with some great ideas, I think, and good justifications, good arguments for taking into consideration these changes. And that's all I have uh, today. So I'll hand back to Christian. Thank you, Chris. Uh, well, um, it has been again a very dense uh, presentation about the, the state of thought and um, the journey, uh, including the revision of the ISO standard, which is on the way. Um, thank you very much for this. Um, I notice at the moment that uh, we don't have any question in the Q&A facility, uh, but uh, I encourage you to do so, um, dear participants. And also I encourage you to uh, fill the form uh, you find in the chat box, also the hyperlink to this uh, form. This said, uh, I know that uh, uh, one of our participants has a lot of patience. Uh, Jeff Martin has raised the hand and I want to give him the, the floor. Uh, he, I think he was asking the, the floor already during Joseph's presentation. Um, so uh, Jeff, uh, you are enabled, yes. My, my first comment, uh, thanks very much for the presentations. My first comment is that we can't write either, neither in the Q&A or the chat, they're both turned off for us. That's why you haven't got any questions there. Oh, oh. Um, <laughs> that is a bad news. <laughs> okay. okay. But the chat box, that's, it is disabled, I know, but- uh, No, the q and I can't type anything in there. Okay. But uh, now we have the chance to, to express okay. it. Yeah. No, I, thanks. I think these were really interesting. Um, and uh, I think you've made some good progress on the PHP ID. Um, so, uh, but I wasn't completely clear on what you're suggesting for the the next revision of the standard, are you suggesting that you're going to add these, these four particular characteristic, characteristics, the one that Marlon was, was discussing, saying these ones should, should be added very specifically and used in the calculation of the PHP ID, is that correct? That's for Chris. Uh, it, it, this, well, um, for the one, one, two, sorry, hi, hi Jeff, thanks, <laughs> thanks for your question there. Um, for the 11239 and 20440, those attributes are already there. Um, I think what we're going to really have to um, to discuss is whether the PHP ID, the 11616 standard and um, uh, implementation guide need to be revised or whether there's somewhere else that we might need to say, this is how you come up with creating the PHP ID. Uh, but from the, from the 11239 perspective, all of that information is already there we're simply going to say you can use them. Um, I don't know if Malin or anyone else, or Christian even has a, a thought on this, but it's more, that, that is, as you say, it's more the PHP ID side of, of things that needs to be, I think, revised. And... Okay. Uh, okay, I'll comment. Uh, one is that apparently the, the, the chat, the Q&A does work. I was just using the wrong keyboard. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Um, uh, but the... Um, I think one of the problems in in the standards have been lack of specificity. So I think to to be crystal clear, um, if we're going to revise the definition of the PHP ID a little bit, it should be crystal clear as to as to exactly what attributes um, should be used there. You know the 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 first version of the standard was published in 2012, and we're still you know, nine years later, still trying to figure out exactly how to apply it. And I think, I think part of it is, is the lack of specificity. Um, but I think this, this, this feels like good progress. Um, the, um, the thing though is the, P I think we have to be careful though, and not to push this too far. The PHP ID is, it was designed for um, adverse reaction reporting. And I think the characteristics, my spontaneous um, feeling is that the characteristics that, that Marlon has described uh, will probably get us pretty close to, clo definitely closer than what we've had previously. 
but I don't think what's been discussed here would give us something that can be used straight off for prescribing because you need more specific you need more specificity. So you, you can't, for example, uh, mix up a powder for solution uh, and uh, concentrate for solution, for example, necessarily in, in a prescribing situation. So I think that would need uh, a separate set of characteristics. Uh, the PHP ID will maybe get you one step a little bit closer, but it, it's definitely not sufficient as, as we've discussed here for use straight off in either a prescribing um, situation or even for a substitution situation. Uh, please, sorry. please. Yeah. Uh, try to be concise because uh, there are a few minutes left. Okay. And I think we have yeah. another comment to do the, this to express. Yeah, yeah I, I agree entirely. And I think that it's worth uh, emphasizing that the pilot was done for a global PHPID, which mm -hmm. is really intended for discussing interregional. And uh, what needs to be clarified as well, um, as you said, you know, need to make it crystal clear whether you can have instead, um, you know, for example, in Europe, if you use these, you know, a full pharmaceutical dose form, then there's no need to go down into the, it, it would be a shame to lose the granularity that's provided in that. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you might say, no, I definitely want to give this um, uh, coat. This person definitely needs a coated tablet, not just a tablet. And I think it's important that we do address how that can still be kept, particularly for, for well, for Europe, for example, where we want to uh, you know, talk about cross-border prescriptions and things like that. So it's not, for, from my perspective, it's not intended to completely replace PHP IDs. It's, it's a specific global adverse event. For, for adverse events, I, I think that this is good progress. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop there, let some, somebody else talk. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, I know you are a good insider of all this and you followed this work for a while now. Um, I, I think also one of the, the issues um, which we are facing in general is the backward compatibility. Since we published uh, the standards uh, nine years ago, as you said, um, some implementation has been going on. And now if we improve the things, um, we have to be quite careful that it works also with were those who have already uh, implemented. But that's the, um, the work. I mean, these are thoughts which we integrate. Uh, I don't think we need to answer you know, everything uh, right now, uh, but we integrate these thoughts uh, in the uh, ISO work, um, which is also um, fed by the, the experience in, uh, in Unicom. And this is what I said uh, as an introduction. Um, I see Ron Fitzmartin wants to express himself. Ron, please. Yes, just quickly, because I know we only have a few minutes. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Oh, very good. Um, just quickly um, to the presenters, uh, terrific uh, uh, presentations. Uh, uh, Joseph, I had not seen that presentation and very interesting um, uh, work that uh, you and your colleagues have, have done. Um, uh, yeah, so our, just want to make it clear um, and certainly uh, uh, Chris uh, Jarvis knows this, um, the intent of the FDA UMC pilot was um, uh, primarily focused on the use case of pharmacovigilance and um, being able to calculate the, eventually calculate the global PH, PHPID for that, um, knowing that there's other use cases um, globally and certainly regionally. Um, Chris, um, I, some new slides from you and really appreciate the, I think it was slide 66 about linking um, the municipal uh, dose form. Um, very interesting there. Um, I think some of the issues um, that we found with this pilot, uh, I mean, we learned a lot of things from the pilot and uncovered a lot of uh, issues as well. But I think um, for everyone on the on the call, um, we do not plan to stop here. We do feel that uh, the work that Chris presented about uh, uh, the updates to the uh, ISO documents uh, needs to move forward, but we, we also are committed to doing additional pilots to um, find out whether there's ways to, uh, um, to reconcile some of these issues that 
uh, we found. Maybe, maybe it is. Um, maybe there is another attribute that needs to be added to the mix for a particular use case. I understand um, the EDQM terminology set, so maybe it's not there, but maybe it's with the maintenance organization for a particular use case. Maybe we do need um, another uh, attribute. Um, but I think all of that um, can, will be worked on in the coming uh, months. Uh, thanks, Christian. Thank you uh, and welcome, uh, Ron. Uh, we are coming to the end of this um, uh, Committee of Expertise and we have one um, pending remark uh, uh, in the Q&A, which did work by chance. Um, uh, I think uh, it's, it's a comment and I will just read it for, for the sake uh, of everybody that we have heard it. Um, we cannot answer that really uh, yet, but we, as I said, we take these things, uh, this information into consideration. Um, so Grunhild uh, wrote, the need for a prescription for a patient to get in a pharmacy and a prescription in a hospital is different with respect to group concentrate solution and powder in the same group. We take this um, uh, as a kind of a comment uh, and we will integrate that in our thoughts, in our work. Um, uh, we, we have a lot uh, in front of us as uh, I tried to express before, um, at the same time, we are revising a nearly 10 years old standard now. Um, we have to take uh, backward compatibility uh, into account because we don't know who has implemented that as is, uh, with the help also of the, the technical specification. Um, but we want to improve. Um, and uh, the end goal, uh, it's, it's, it, all that is a little bit federated. You know, The end goal is to have one single global PHP ID, because that is required, especially for adverse events, reporting and analysis. But that doesn't exclude that we have regional PHP ID, as long as they are linked to the global one. And the regional one may respond to other needs. It's not against the IDMP standard, which are more flexible than we think, but the, their structure, which you saw in the, um, uh, the wedding cake, you know, with uh, the three blocks, uh, including the, those, um, then the pharmaceutical products, the blue cake, and the green one on the bottom. This is the, the structure which has to be uh, fulfilled uh, to make that standard work. And all that must be linked to something global. Otherwise, we are completely losing the benefit of uh, IDMP. Is it for address event reporting or is it uh, for any other use in the clinical space? So that were uh, my just a few words to try to conclude to uh, very dense uh, discussion we had. I would like to thank uh, our speaker today. They had um, a very hard task um, to address something which is not, uh, I would say, the most attractive uh, in the IDMP uh, piece of work, but it is extremely important and we concentrated on this important aspect uh, of the dose forms today. And we hope that we contributed to bring clarity um, to our um, uh, participants and also that uh, their reaction um, uh, help us also to uh, continue our journey to make this standard better. With this, I wish you an excellent continuation of the day if you're on the West, a good night if you're on the East and a good afternoon in Europe. And I give you a rendezvous for the 26th, if not 29th of uh, October for the next community of expertise. Goodbye and thank you. Keep safe.